Welcome, welcome. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's good to see everybody here this afternoon for our high school art studio showcase. Uh, unfortunately, Dr. Khan, Khan fell ill today, um, but I wanted to just send a message that she's very proud of the accomplishments and achievements of all of her students these past four weeks. Um, they have worked so hard at developing their skills, and you will be amazed today when you see their work, as, as I was amazed today when I visited Mildor in class today. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to turn the microphone over to Mr. Mildor Chevalier, uh, and he is going to be begin the program for us this afternoon now. So Mildor, it's yours. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, David. And thank you everyone and welcome for uh, um, our final showcase and thank you for being here. And uh, on behalf of our, you know, student great talented artists, I want to thank you also for being part of this journey. I know, uh, we know, um, you know, uh, behind the scene, you are also part of this, uh, this, uh, uh, achievement. So thank you for, for all your support and thank you for being here to celebrate with, with us uh, this moment. And thank you for all the uh, SAI team. Thank you, David, Brisa. You know, uh, it's take, you know, a lot of work to uh, have this uh, happen. And um, also on behalf of Dr. Ken and I, we want to thank the artist for, you know, always being creative, being here and always try uh, your best. So I want to give a clap for all our young artists. So great job, everyone. And so shortly, we're going to see the amazing work they've been creating and we will enjoy them all together. Um, so as uh, David say, my name is Meldor Chevalier. I am myself a practicing artist and an artist instructor in studio in a school. Um, which this year is in partnership with uh, SAI. So uh, we've been working together and I feel really privileged to be part of this program. And we know this year has been a challenging one, but uh, we all try our best and we'll make it possible. So um, um, now it's uh, worthy of celebrating uh, our achievements. So thank you for that. And without further ado, we're gonna start um, our showcase. Uh, I'm going to share a slide with you and we'll um, see the work of everyone. So uh, our artists, if you guys can, you know, have your camera on. So when we're talking, we can uh, know the artists who are speaking uh, because sometimes when we're sharing screen, we cannot see everyone, but so now we can all uh, have our camera on and take a moment to uh, just, uh, see each other, all right? Thank you, thank you. Let, uh, let the show begin. And uh, here we go. So we'll start, give me one second. I'm trying to uh, present now. Okay, so we're gonna start with uh, Raima. Hi, so my name is Raima Chilvery and I'm a rising 10th grader, so sophomore. And I made this piece, it's a collage, and I use different photographs to like piece together into like this entire artwork. And it's based on like my family, my cousin's family moving to Bangladesh for their summer vacation this year. And like, they have like a huge meaning in my life. And I wanted to portray that like, here so the hand represents my hand waving at the airplane and the background is also made up of like clouds and also like my grandmother's apartment which is on the right 
and my my cousins always like lived at my grandmother's apartment so I decided to include that in the collage as well and this is another observational piece that I drew it's a tree at Juniper Valley Park that I used to always go when I was a child and my mom climbed that tree once and we took a photo of her there and we recently visited the park again to like take more family photos there so I decided to draw the tree again and this time like in instead of including like the usual green and brown color palette I decided to include some peachy tones so like it could make the image pop Thank you, thank you very much, Raima. And next artist is Lena. Um, I'm Lena, I'm a rising senior. Um, so this, I, for this piece, I like decided to make a still life, which also kind of serviced as a sort of self portrait, like of things that bring me comfort. So like the title Lazy Days, kind of a reference to like how these activities like knitting and whatnot, like service as a way to kind of like relax and like wind down from, you know, like work and study. Um, and like I used a pen because I wanted to keep the drawing super detailed and yet still kind of loose. And I also like didn't want the any color to detract from like the basic shapes and like the details. Um, so this fractured piece kind of brings together several disjointed objects into like one cohesive kind of still life with elements from like each being carried across um, every shard. So like the objects themselves were left mostly black and white to emphasize like the unity, but the backgrounds I made colorful. So each shard has its own, its own color palette, but the same hues can be found in like all of them. So even though each view is unique, like they're all part of a greater whole. Careful. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. Our next artist is Shelly. Hi, I'm Shelly. I'm a rising uh, junior uh, for this piece, which is a mixed media sculpture. I wanted to portray an abstracted human heart. Um, and I use transparent materials like wire, um, organza fabric and sewing thread to illustrate the fragility of the of the body and of the physical world. And the piece is suspended from the ceiling, which allows it to interact with the environment. Um, like in the first picture, um, you can see the cast shadow that it creates. And this also allows the viewer to walk around and under the piece to see it in its full view. Uh, this is an acrylic painting on Bristol. Um, it's another fractured piece and it's um, it's meant to depict a bird that I had found on the sidewalk um, walking, to, walking to and from work every day. Um, and I thought that it was, it was quite sad that the animal had passed away, but I thought it was also um, quite beautiful that it was um, returning to its environment. And I wanted to portray like a sense of tranquility and um, sincerity with the delicate brushwork. Wonderful. Thank you, Shelly. And our next artist is Marielle. Um, hello, I'm a rising junior and my idea for this was originally to do some tangles, but then I was dissuaded by the idea and just, just decided to do my own design. And that's, um, that's what I did and this is what I have now. And then uh, for the next one, um, I had more of an idea behind it. So um, the idea was for the, uh, to show the world how it's turning dark and um, everything um, is turning for the worse. 
So the clock or the watch is supposed to represent the world and how the world keeps going on and on while everything bad um, is also going on and um, how by um, how the time goes, um, it gets worse and worse and then the people disappear and it goes under um, all the problems in the world. Wonderful, thank you, Maria. Our next artist is Anika. Um, I'm Anika, I'm a rising senior. Um, my fractured artwork is about the birds in, <clears throat> in New York City as they live alongside us with their own thing. And they're like, uh, uh, this piece features a few of the many birds that we see in New York City. From left to right, there's a blue jay, sparrow, starling, and pigeon. Um, the different camera angles in each shard um, emphasizes the curious energy of the birds and has a bit of a humorous tone as the birds live um, uh, alongside us as our neighbors. The composition creates a bit of a circular flow which helps create the unity among the pieces. Yeah. Um, and these are some quick figure study drawings um, focusing on shadow and movement. The one on the left, I worked starting from the middle using charcoal to block in shadows and midtones, and I used an eraser to get some of the highlights. The one on the right, I worked with a line of action and refined it from there. Wonderful. Thank you, Annika. Our next artist is Sophie. Um, this piece is a detritus still life called fish food um, made on nine by 12 inch Bristol paper with pen. Um, I gathered plastic objects in my house um, that were thrown out in the day um, and I put them together to create a still life. The objects um, usually only take one day to use but a um, hundred years to decompose and um, just using plastic and recycling it isn't the solution too because 91 percent of plastic doesn't actually get recycled so we have to find another solution to our problem and I wanted to portray that by showing the um, mass amount of plastic that we waste in just a day's worth. Um, this is an assemblage made of found objects around my house. These objects were used and hot glued together, and they are stereotypical feminine products, um, as well as objects from my childhood. The title of the piece um, is Expensive Pink Wheel in response to the pink tax set on feminine products. Um, and even though they're necessary for almost all women at some point in their lives, it's been heavily looked down upon and um, taxed very highly as well. And in certain states in America, it's been exempt, but 30 of them still haven't, as well as Norway, which is where my mom is from. And they have um, some of the highest taxes in like the whole entire world, which is 25%. Um, so it's like dear to me in both countries. Um, and the wheel represents also the circle of life, which women like hold the most power on, and then also the menstrual cycle um, and how women are the center of both of them. And the ripped up receipt um, on the bottom is a push against the tampon tax and the bias that nations impose on sale tax for feminine products. And yeah, thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, next is Anira. Hi, I'm Manira. I'm a rising junior, and this is the collage made of journals and um, books, books pages. Um, so the idea of the the concept of the collage is about how society underestimates the importance of nutrition in current times, and I basically wanted to show how. Um, by underestimating the um, underestimating the consumption of the fried food, um, it will actually um, affect you in a harm. It will actually harm your endocrine system and will um, so, and will result in severe illnesses if if it's um, 
uh, if the if the endocrine system is contaminated, and I wanted to show this message through my pieces, um, through my images, and I was inspired to create this message from the conversations with my mother about nutrition, and that's how um, I also decided to represent the New York culture and how. Um, fast food is distributed on Manhattan. So I um, expressed it in the background. Yeah. Um, this is a, a sandwich made of the plastic canisters. Um, so I decided to use the plastic canisters from nutrition that my uh, family buys and the plastic they are made of is uh, post-consumer recycled resin that decreases the amount of plastic waste. Um, I wanted to use this plastic canisters as my material to visually represent the idea of how the ecology is being preserved by using this kind of plastic and making recyclable canisters. Um, I was basically planning to show um, the tree um, in order to represent the idea of how um, of how ecology is being preserved and how it affects the, I mean how it, it results in the growth of trees and how the nature is being um, preserved and healthy. Great, thank you, Anira. Wonderful. Next is Ming. Hi, my name is Ming. I'm a rising junior and um, my still life is of a bag of trash. I wanted to challenge myself and draw a bunch of objects piled together. I decided to paint in black and white with acrylic paint and um, I mixed my own black. So some shades came out a little more blue than others, but I really liked how it came out in the end. Yeah. For my fractured piece, I chose to do facial expressions because um, I was inspired by a picture of my mom that I took where she had this um, very scared and dramatic face. And it's actually the reference photo that I used for the face on the very left. Um, I used pen and cross hatching to shade and charcoal to make the background very dark. Thank you. Thank you, Ming, wonderful. Our next artist is Iris. So I'm Iris, I'm an incoming sophomore. And so this is my still life. Um, I painted a teacup and I added some hedgehogs and I really wanted the still life to be very colorful, playful and like a little bit magical because you know, hedgehogs can't swim in teacups. But yeah, this was a really fun piece to paint and I really enjoy working with watercolor. Um, my next one is about all my collective fears. So each fragment represents a different fear. And I actually arranged it to tell a story so you can see like the cliff on top and someone's falling down into the ocean. And so, um, yeah, it was fun working with ink in this one, which was also a little bit challenging because it did take a while to dry, but overall I really enjoyed the process and I really liked the outcome. All right, thank you very much, Iris. Uh, next artist is Jessica. Hi, my name is Jessica, and I'm also a incoming senior. On um, this piece, I wanted to um, showcase uh, a item of like comfort from my childhood, which is um, the stuffed animal on the bottom. And I want to contrast it with what is happening right now, which is a sense of like danger um, since, you know, the coronavirus. And I wanted to show that like feeling of being inside and watching like, you know, the world beyond the window and how dangerous it is. Um, for this piece, um, it is collage called Dysmorphosis. And I wanted this to um, portray like, you know, body, dysmorphia and it's something that like a lot of my friends around me and you know we suffered for a long time and I wanted this to be really personal and show how like 
um, sometimes, you know, when we see pictures and other people, it's hard to ignore like the different body parts that, you know, we want on ourselves. It's like creating that, you know, body that we want. Thank you, Jessica. Our next one is Mary. Hi, I'm Mary and I'm an incoming senior. So in the still life drawing, I wanted to like challenge myself and focus mainly on one color. So the first object I wanted to use was the plant on the left and I gave you my color color of green. So then I found two glass bottles to use. And I also wanted to find a way to make the piece feel like more cohesive and unified. So I found a plant potted in a green glass jar that acts as like a bridge between the two other glasses and the plant. And I'm pretty happy with how this piece came out. Um, so this piece was definitely more of a challenge for me. It was out of my comfort zone because I've never really worked with like sculpting or anything for the most part. And I wanted to use like soda cans and like cardboard and other things that would have been garbage and make something that like mimicked a piece of stained glass. Because my thinking was like, how can I use garbage and make something that I find like beautiful and interesting. And even though this piece was definitely more challenging, I am pretty happy with how it came out. Wonderful. Thank you, May. Our next artist is Isabel. Hi, I'm Isabel, and this is my assemblage piece. Um, it uses found objects from around my house. It's mostly used art supplies and other various objects that would otherwise be thrown away. And I wanted to construct it so that from different angles, it could either be seen as like an explosion with materials protruding out, or it could be seen as a collapse where they're more folding into each other based on the direction that they're put together. And um, for me, this piece um, conveys the creative process behind making art. And I just wanted to use materials in a way that they weren't intended for otherwise and repurpose them so that they didn't go to waste. Um, this is, these are figure studies drawn from image references. And the first one was a quicker drawing. Um, it was more rushed, but the, this, the last two, I think were like 20 minutes, if I remember correctly. Wonderful. Thank you, Isabel. Um, our next artist is Safe. Yes, I'm a rising junior and this is a still a contemporary still life. My inspiration behind this still life is the mass production of man-made products. Most products such as baby oil and canned foods are made from natural or non-renewable resources. Companies use up resources faster than na the nature could regenerate them to meet public demand, gradually draining out the resources on earth. It was a challenging process to come out of my comfort zone and incorporate unrealistic and bold colors in replacement of more realistic colors. I was not familiar with changing up the colors of the reference to match the aesthetic, but I have successfully created a modern looking painting and I am appreciative of this experience. This assemblage is made to raise awareness for the close relation between suicide and emotional neglect on youth. Studies have shown that suicide rates are steadily rising over the years, as most of the victims of suicide are young adults aging from 18 to 25. Why is it that so many young people are seeking to end their lives? The most common cause is the experience of emotional neglect during their childhood. In order to stop suicides from rising, we must first stop emotional neglect from denying a hopeful child of his or her bright future. The sculpture re resembles a blue whale gasping for breath because blue whales are sentient creatures known to beach themselves when put under extreme emotional pressure. Similarly to what drives a human to suicide, the raw cardboard material and the skeleton of the sculpture showing through demonstrates the vulnerability of young adults in the dangers of an emotional neglect. Wonderful. Thank you, Faye. Our next artist is Marilena. Um, hello. So my first piece is just an organic still life of lemons because lemons, you know, lemons are in a lot of things, you know, it could be used as garnish, they could be used in a drink such as lemonade or limeade. And uh, it's a nice uh, fruit that uh, we don't really eat, but it's used on a lot of things. 
And my next image is a fractured piece. I took a kind of different spin on it. I made it more of a uh, kind of a pick art type of piece. I took several different aspects uh, that you'd see in summer, like certain summer flowers, such as forget me lots and um, summer items at the bottom, different types of fruit that you usually eat in summer, such as watermelon and pineapple, and then the ocean and ice cream, which is a nice refreshing um, food. Um, so yeah, that's what my fractured piece is about. Thank you, Marilena. Next artist is Anastasia. Hi, I'm Anastasia. I'm a rising senior, and this first work was a still life with oils on canvas. Um, the main like motive for me with this one was to capture my kitchen in kind of like a picturesque state, something that's like not really normal because usually it is quite messy. And I tried to keep like the color palette pretty neutral so that the vibrant reds from like the pot and the towel would really like stand out and be like the main focus. I also wanted to incorporate kind of this reflective aspect that I was seeing in other still lives with the metallic um, tea kettle. And I thought it would be interesting to capture. Um, this second piece was a mixed media piece. I used found objects like toothpicks, sewing thread, and Sculpey to create the form in the middle. And I wanted to capture the feeling of being kind of sort of stuck and suffocated uh, with like the toothpicks puncturing this form in the middle. And to keep all the thread together, I used hot glue. And I thought it was an interesting dynamic to kind of flesh out the way that this form in the middle is keeping everything together, but yet the things that are puncturing it are also keeping it up. Wonderful. Thank you, Anastasia. Our next artist, Roberto. Hi, so I'm Roberto Quesada, a rising junior at Brooklyn Technical High School. Um, this first art piece is called American Addiction. Um, for me, I noticed recently that I was starting to drink a lot of fruit juices and, and sodas and a lot of like very sugary drinks. Um, and I did a lot of research into how uh, many big corporations will use flashy colors and like put fruits on their cans in order to make it look healthier and really make it flashy so that, you know, children from a young age want to buy these drinks. So to me, this was like putting together like all of these different cans and like these colors to really demonstrate like just how flashy many of these drinks are and how in like the status quo uh many americans are like addicted to all of these sugary drinks leading to so many bad you know things down the line because of marketing and how there needs to be a shift in our culture in order to uh, be able to like uh, prevent this from getting worse um, you can also see that it's shaped like an a kind of to represent like arizona like addiction and and those other terms all right, so I personally really like this art piece. It's called Mesti Sahe, which in Spanish means of mixed race. Um, for me, this came from a place of, you know, in Latin America, race is very different because we have a history of, you know, white people coming from Europe and the indigenous people and also African slaves, like all mixing together. So as you can see in the back, I put census forms and like so often I have to fill out forms where it's like, what's your race? And I'm like, I don't know, like I'm a little bit white, a little bit indigenous, a little bit African, right? And all of that causes so much confusion, especially, you know, in the US where everybody likes to put people into separate categories. And in Latin America, that's kind of not a thing that exists. So I really wanted to demonstrate a lot of that racial confusion in this art piece, like putting together people of different ethnicities and backgrounds to show how, you know, as a Honduran, I've come to be a mixture of different races, but I've learned through this art piece and my research that that's a beautiful thing that, you know, I've grown to love instead of, you know, hating myself for not fitting it narrowly into a certain box. Thank you, Roberto. Our next artist is Julian. Hi, I'm a rising junior and this piece is still life of a Dorito bag, which is done in graphite, more specifically lead pencil to capture all the fine detail. Uh, I chose to draw this because Doritos are a snack that I love. I don't have them much, but when I want a snack, I typically go for Doritos. I thought all the intricate folds and graphic letters were fun to draw. 
This is a mixed media that represents a tree with musical notes growing from the branches like flowers. A tree is seen as something that constantly grows starting from the roots up. I started music at a young age, so I wanted this tree to represent my musical growth and how it has been a part of my life, as well as how it represents me as a person. Wonderful, thank you, Julian. Our next artist is Alton. Um, hi, I'm a rising senior, and this piece is a acrylic still life on a 14 by 18 inch canvas. And we were tasked with making a still life that was modern and contemporary. So I wanted to challenge myself by taking old items like antique clocks and um, an, an old globe and trying to use colors and like the composition to make it modern. So I did this by using a lot of bright colors and a lot of bright glazes and in the background using a lot of sharp triangles to make it very um, sharp on the eye and shocking almost. Um, so these are my figure studies that I've done throughout the class. They're all very quick studies, but I wanted to try to really show the motion in the characters by just doing very simple shapes in some of them um, and just doing block blocking out with pencil. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Alton. Our next artist is Michelle. Um, these are two figure studies I made using charcoal. So for the one on the left, I started by creating like a rough outline and, and building forms from there. And then rather than focusing in on specific parts of the body, I would look at all the parts together. Um, for the one on the right, I started in the middle of the body and focus on observing the shadows and lights rather than the form as a whole. Um, I'm sorry, my internet isn't that good. Okay. Um, but for this one, I made a still life with oil pastel and I really wanted to experiment with color. So I decided to choose objects that were vastly different in that sense. I ended up picking toys that I felt created a nostalgic tone in the piece for me. Um, I attempted to use blue and purple shadows for each object in order to tie the piece together color-wise. And the use of oil pastel allowed me to easily layer the colors and make them appear more saturated in the drawing. Um, it also allowed me to add deep shadows to make the piece seem more three-dimensional. Wonderful, thank you. Our next one is Claudine. Um, hi, I'm Claudine. Um, I'm a rising sophomore, and in this piece, I hope to express like the messy life that many of us have when creating art and the frustration that comes with it because sometimes we make mistakes and have to start over, but um, those can really help make art a lot better and make us better artists as well. And um, this piece was actually made by accident because um, I'd cut out a piece on the opposite side and, and I just kind of thought that the design was interesting. So um, what I can really take out of this is that mistakes, um, the mistakes you make are really like beneficial to you and you. Wonderful. Thank you, Claudine. Our next artist is Nat. Hi, I'm Nat. This piece, this is a collage, it's untitled, but my message I wanted to talk about or showcase identity and identity or woman's identity in general what we wear, how we wear it, and how we express ourselves can give a glimpse into who we are as people. But this also means how others perceive us and, and us based on what we see, or is based on what we see at a surface level. Yeah. This one is a still life of a potted plant in my room, in my house. I, it was more so just an experiment with acrylic paint as I haven't done it a lot lately. And overall, I wanted to focus more on color and shadows. And I think I really um, capture that. And I really like how it came out. Thank you, Nant. Our next artist is Fiorella. Hello, I'm Fiorella. I'm 16 and I'm a rising junior. 
and this is called Tropical Summer. This is a collage. And before making this piece, I had recently traveled to Punta Cana in DR. And as somebody who's always surrounded by the city, um, I was amazed by the tropical environment and how beautiful it was. And with this piece, I really wanted to capture that feeling of summer and, trop and the tropical environment I saw over there. And um, yeah, um, I added, I added a lot of turquoise blue colors because one thing that stood out to me um, in DR was the was the blue was the blue ocean and how like it looked really pretty to me. So I just really wanted to um, incorporate that in my piece. Um, and for this piece, this piece is called Memories from Another. And um, when I made this piece, I was in a rented house and. Um, when I first entered the house, I noticed that there are many things that were left by the original house owners, and I took a couple of these um, pieces, I took a couple of these objects that were left by them and um, made a still life out of them because I wanted to like um, sort of uh, show how they were when they were living in this house to show how who they were. Um, and even though I never met them, through looking around their house, I was able to know bits and pieces about them, such as looking at family photos and looking at decorations, accessories on the walls. Um, and yeah, that was my goal for this piece to show who they were um, from the objects they left behind. Thank you. Thank you, Fira. Um, our next and last but not least is Kaylin. Hi, my name is Kaylin and I'm a rising sophomore. Um, this piece is about how people are picking specific women as a standard and how other people have to work harder in a different way to be more like a standard, which is like what society is about, how it's unfair. Um, this one is about how everything in the ocean is like suffocating the ocean life. I try to make hot, the hot glue look like a net that's like capturing everything and how um, there's so much trash in the sea and how it's hurting sea life. Wonderful, thank you, thank you, um, Kayleen. And thank you everyone. And that's the end of our showcase. And a round of applause for our artists. Thank you, everyone. And I think there's some comments also in the chat for you guys. You can take a quick look and enjoy those words of encouragement. So wonderful. And um, again, thank you, everyone. So if you guys have questions for our artists, uh, I think we have some time for that. So please uh, feel free to uh, to unmute and comments, and the floor is yours. And also the chat also, it's a good option. You can continue making some comments. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, Peter, yeah, go ahead. First of all, uh, congratulations, everybody. Really amazing work. Uh, I know uh, Ms. Khan and Mr. Chevalier, Jane and Mildor were so proud of you all summer long, just uh, really talking about how your commitment to artistry and under these crazy circumstances to begin with. And Nicholas, certainly also in the studio. Um, I think, uh, so that, first of all, thank you to Mildor and Jane. Can we give them a big hand? And, and yeah, love for the you. amazing work they did with you. Uh, you. Jamie knows a little under the weather, so we should feel better. I would love to hear a uh, Mildorf, maybe a couple artists, uh, something that surprised you this summer, like a takeaway about yourself. I heard a couple of you say that you felt challenged. Uh, I'd love to hear maybe just one or two. Is there something that you found out about yourself as an artist this summer? Oh, um, personally or, yeah. I, I leave it open as artists is, is about technique or personally. Is, is that uh, yeah, I think if there's oh, one word uh, is 
um, maybe uh, possibilities and or endless possibilities and uh, in, as artists and maybe alternatives. So those are the words that um, when we create uh, mostly in that type of, in that situation, where if you don't have this material, you have to find another way to get it done. And I think in the core, and this is how artists push the boundary of the creativity and also uh, discover. So I think um, this uh, have been uh, rather an opportunity for us to, to see our limits or push our limits. So yeah, I, I talk yeah, no, that's... also in a personal sense, also with doing this month and how we've been experiencing that program. So I guess how this is how I would uh, make um, sort of, um, yeah, this is how I put it. So thank yeah. you, Mildor. I, I, uh, that's great context. I, I, was, I would love to hear from the student artists too, if there was something they personally learned about because it was their program, they're the ones who were maybe being stretched. If some of the artists wanted to just share some of what they learned, yeah, thank okay. you. Yeah, you have your hands up. Go ahead, Stephanie. Yeah. Um. So before I say I, I just mainly focus on just realism and just drawing directly based on the reference, and I wouldn't add anything creative to it. And I didn't understand the appeal of abstraction because I didn't understand it. But during SAI, the teachers really pushed me to try to abstract my art. For example, during my assemblage, I was tempted to cover the cardboard texture to make a more realistic render. But um, Dr. Khan and Mr. Chevalier told me to let the beauty of the abstraction stay. And I ended up working with just raw cardboard textures. I stepped out of my comfort zone with a lot of the pieces I've done, but I really loved it. I love how it just opened my eyes and I'm able to learn new things and just not stick with my original idea. Great, great. Wonderful to hear that, Sefei. And you know, you've been uh, really showing the interest and the the enthusiasm enthusiasm to um, uh, explore in new territories so, and experiment. So that's great. Uh, thank you. Anyone else? So I know for our artists, it's been a long day. So thank you for <laughs> being patient. And uh, again, you guys really, really show um, high level of creativity, great work. And uh, so I don't know if David has some closing words. And uh, so that's, uh, that's our show. Um, well, Mildura, if I could just again, thank, uh, thank you and Ms. Khan. I just want to let everybody know on, uh, so you know who I am. I'm the director of theater. Peter, I'm also the uh, supervisor producer for SAI. So on behalf of, of everybody else, I'd like to thank any of the parents who are, who are on listening, watching, supporting your kids, and also that Karen Rosner, our director of visual arts, the arts office, who, as I oversee theater for the school, she oversees visual arts. And I, I, I can see her posting her, her, right. <laughs> her, her insights and, and her being proud. So right. just on behalf of all of us, thank you all and have a great summer. Yeah, and thank I just you. wanted, th thank you, Peter. I just wanted to add, um, I am so impressed by the work that you've done and the fact that so many of you, if not all of you spoke about challenging yourselves and pushing yourselves. So just congratulations to everyone. And Peter, congratulations for a wonderful program. And also to, I see that Brisa Munoz and David Lamort are also with us, uh, two colleagues who helped produce the summer. So thank you. And there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes so that you guys can have your studios. And we hope that you come back uh, for SAI next year if you're not graduating. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Anira, I see you have a do you have a last word. Uh, Anira, do you have something to say? Go yeah, ahead. I just wanted to thank the program for the wonderful opportunities and for expanding my knowledge of art. Like I really expanded my view and on many aspects and I really enjoyed working with concepts like I really um, 
changed my opinion about a lot of mediums and a lot of um, art forms. For example, as assemblage and collage, like I really was impressed by how um, you, by how you can express yourself through the, the different mediums that are not traditional and not necessarily on paper. And I also wanted to thank you for the museum visits, virtual museum visits. It was also very educating and interesting to discuss the work of. Um, artists. It was a very educating program and I really enjoyed my time here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anira. Thank you, everyone. And have a wonderful summer. And uh, yeah, and artists continue being creative. Art is 24-7. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank Amazing you, everyone. work. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your summers. Everyone.